Hello and welcome back to part two of Church Phone Call Catholic Priest vs. Atheist by um, The Stallion 76. And here we're now listening to the uh, the Catholic priest response to Brett's question about the um, angels taking in the daughters of men. As from our perspective is that sometimes there's our stories that are being told for a point of view and top of the head, I, I don't recall the um, exact meaning of those, um, but we don't interp interpret those exactly as written. Yeah, but the story says because they had sexual intercourse with human women, it says that it created deformities and nephilims, nephiliums, I believe is how it's right. pronounced. So, yeah, so my recollection is that it's just a way for, the, for them to talk about how... Um, This is where I would have to respectfully disagree with um, the Catholic priest uh, that it, it isn't just a symbolic message or, I mean, this isn't a parable. This isn't a, um, a, a you know, poetic language when this happens. St. Paul is clearly saying when a woman is prophesying, when a, a woman prophet needs to cover her hair when she's prophesying because of what happened with those fallen angels. Now, it, it, it is an, an event that happened, and uh, it's, it's shameful that a lot of the churches in every denomination is now starting to take this liberal approach rather than looking more deeper into it. Um, but... I, this is something really we need to pray for and let God's Spirit work in these people and um, the church really needs to start picking up where it has fallen asleep and slacked on. I'm looking at older versions of the Bible and it says it has a character by the name of Lilith in it. Have you heard of Lilith? It says, according to some of the stuff that I've researched on the internet, it says Lilith was actually the first woman of Adam, but she fell. Again, that's part of the Apocrypha, um, Persian and uh, Babylonian stories of Genesis. It isn't the pure story. This is something that they just put in later. And so if you're going to be talking about the Bible, I would stick to the one that was through God's people. First through um, the uh, the Hebrews, and then now passed on to um, the church, to the Christians. And now she's become like some kind of deformity or some creature that lurks the earth, according to the, the story. Have you ever heard of Lilith before? Uh, not my head, I don't recall. It, according to the stories... Uh, Sumerian text and such like that it says that she she basically wanted to rule over men and that is why God uh, threw her out of the garden also in Isaiah 34 14 it, it talks about satyrs Do you know what a satyr is no him it's a half human half goat okay now I'm, I'm curious because that word actually originated from the pagan belief systems why is satyrs in the Bible okay I, well, I was wondering why it is that there are, are, are pagan creatures like a satyr in the Bible, Isaiah 34, 14. Yeah, top of my head, I don't know. Okay, a little bit more to dress on the Nephilim is that these are fallen angels taking in the daughters of men. Regular angels, as Jesus said, he and she will not be married nor given in marriage, but they will be like the angels of the Most High. The angels that respect God and obey God do not fornicate with men and women of the earth. These were fallen angels. And the reason why God doesn't just blow up all the fallen angels and kill Satan right now and destroy them is because he has set apart a day to judge everybody, to judge them in righteousness. And so there 
uh, you know, that could be like saying, well, why didn't God just kill everybody evil on earth as well? Well, the, the simple answer, and I could go a bit deeper, uh, you'd like me to, is that how far does God go? Does he stop an evil act by killing the person? Well, then we would all have to be destroyed. And so rather, he uses those times to really show his grace and his love and his mercy. And so you want a God that um, is vengeful and wrathful. And then when you take when we take the few isolated incidents in the Bible where that happens, you then complain and say it's violent. And this is probably the biggest problem I have with atheists understanding the Bible is we give them an answer, they don't like it. We give them another answer, well, they won't accept it and they won't like that. And either way, you know, a good example is they'll say, where is God? Well, the answer quite simply is he's the creator, so he exists outside of his creation, and he's not a physical thing. If you could see God in creation, it means he wouldn't be the creator. And this is why we say that God is spirit, and he's um, an eternal spirit everywhere and unseen. And so that's not good. And you say, well, I can't believe that. Seeing is believing. Then we say, well, he came in the form of Jesus Christ. And so he showed himself and physically made himself known through the manifestation of Christ. And you say, well, that's not no good. I don't want to believe in Christ. And so either way, uh, it seems you guys aren't going to be happy with how we answer. So um, let's continue to hear more of what he has to say. Okay, well, for the um, okay, uh, for the uh, beast here, here I am at as at Isaiah, and I'm reading from the King James because I believe that has it in it. Now, let's read the first passage, and this will explain to you really what's going on here. It says, "Come near, ye nations, to hear and hearken, ye people. Let the earth hear, and all that is therein, the world, and all things that come." forth of it for the indignation of the lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies he hath utterly destroyed them he hath delivered them to the slaughter their slain all shall be cast out and their stink shall come up from up out of their carcasses and the mountains shall be melted with their blood and so this is god's judgment as we see um, throughout the earth of what they're doing and so we turn to the passage he brought up and the wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island and there's and the satyr shall cry to his fellow the screech owl also shall rest there and find for herself a place of rest and so there's a few ways we can answer this and take this one is of course each animal is symbolic of a kingdom and so a pagan nation who worships a pagan god such as a satyr or whatever beast you want this is saying that that kingdom see they shall call the nobles there thereof to the kingdom but none shall be there and all their princes shall be nothing and the throne shall come up in their places so it's um it's saying that this this kingdom or this beast that represents the kingdom will be will go into isolation and um, cry to his fellow owl, which would be um, the Baal religions that worship the owl, and uh, they'll try and the the owl will have rest. They'll they'll flee away and have rest, but um, on an island. And so that's a way of looking at it um the bible also talks about dragons in it this is the second answer well there's no dragons in the world the dragons simply before the 1800s dinosaur bones were called dragon bones and so satyrs before then could have had the meaning for you know just uh an abundance of goats and deers and wildebeest that's really what it classifies them as 
Um, that's another le another way of looking into it. Um, we also see that uh, in Revelation we have all these beasts, you know, lions with claws and uh, bear bear paws and m mixing all these animal imagery together. And then it says that each each image, the nine horns you saw were nine kingdoms, and the crowns on each horn were the kings, and the second beast and all that um, represents a kingdom. And so we have these um, different beasts and so forth representing uh, those people. And so that's the end of this video. Take care, guys. See ya.